Dajahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huo Guo Da Wang. For a long time, I've wanted to do a video about Tucker Carlson, perhaps the most famous anchor on Fox News. Today, I'm doing just that, only under different circumstances than I expected. Because I don't know if you've seen this clip of him talking about Iran, but it is absolutely crazy. Originally, I planned to talk about Tucker Carlson's debate style and why I find him entertaining, even if I disagree with him. Lots of my friends argue with me about Tucker Carlson, but today is not about that. Today, I want to pick apart one of the best video clips I've seen recently. Let's take a look. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Yesterday, as you know, an American airstrike killed an Iranian general called Qasem Soleimani. It starts out just how you would expect it to. Welcome, America has killed a general in Iran. Then he outlines sort of who the general was. There's some bad things he's been involved with, that's for sure. But he was also a leader against ISIS. Soleimani was believed to be a patron of the Shia militias that regularly attacked American troops during the Iraq war. All right, so during our invasion of another country, he was against us. He was also a major player in Syria during their civil war. As were we Americans, for some reason. As well as in the campaign against ISIS. Okay, so he's definitely a controversial figure, but let's just give the U.S. the benefit of the doubt. Let's assume that everything Soleimani did was totally evil in every single way, okay? That should simplify things. We could be engaged in a conflict, a real conflict, with Iran. Right, that's the problem. That is the real fear. War, believe it or not, fellow Americans, is rarely required, but always horrible. So go ahead, right-wing Tucker. Explain to us why creating war is fine. What justifications will you give today? I mean, I assume that's what you're going to do, right? From Iran's perspective, we're already there. If Iranian forces killed the chairman of our Joint Chiefs of Staff, for example, would you consider it an act of war? You would. What is this, Tucker? It's sounding like you're thinking of how Iran must feel right now. You're apparently trying to avoid a position of extreme hypocrisy. But I heard you were a fascist. Are you sure you should think about both sides of international politics? Then Tucker pulls up a tweet that calls for regime change and calls out the neocons for their hawkish ways. If you don't know what a neocon is, it's the most war-hungry section of American politicians. Then it shows Trump explaining how America, as usual, should have the right to put troops anywhere in the world and then declare war on anyone who fights back. You know, fascism. If Americans anywhere are threatened, I am ready and prepared to take whatever action is necessary. Whatever action, that is. Except for, I don't know, bringing troops home, out of harm's way. That action is absolutely crazy, apparently. According to the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Soleimani was killed to forestall planned attacks on Americans. Okay, here we go. Finally, Tucker, it's time to expose your fascist ideology. Go ahead, tell us all about how we need to be the minority report police force of the world. Tell us all about how we need to go around killing people in other countries who allegedly plan to do harm to our troops, illegally occupying their regions. As he later conceded, those attacks would have occurred in the Middle East, not here in America. Tucker, what the hell are you doing? Aren't you supposed to be drumming up support for a new war in Iran? I keep building up to destroy your fascist views, but you keep curveballing me. Was there any imminent threat to the U.S. homeland? Th these were threats that were located in the region. Okay. So Fox News, Tucker Carlson, is telling us something important here. We are killing people in the Middle East because they allegedly want to kill our soldiers in the Middle East. Again, why the hell are we even there in the first place? Bring our troops home to safety. What do you think about that, Tucker? Threats in the region, and that would be in hostile Middle Eastern countries, places where American troops would never be in the first place were it not for the insistent demands of non-geniuses like Max Boot and John Bolton. But questions, the obvious ones, like, is Iran really the greatest threat we face? And who's actually benefiting from this? And why are we continuing to ignore the decline of our own country in favor of jumping into another quagmire from which there was no obvious exit? What the? Tucker, you're screwing up my video here. I was ready to take you down big time. But the fact is I agree with everything you've said so far. You're promoting nonviolence and non-war. I'm just, okay, well, I guess this is a different kind of commentary than people might have expected from me. Now, I've seen enough of your stuff to know that you think China's the biggest threat to America, and that's who you're alluding to in your comments. I disagree, but your overall point is totally spot on. 
as America's leadership rankings fall and fall, why are we getting involved in yet another potential war? Then Tucker picks apart another tweet, calling the killing of any bad guys simple. General Soleimani is dead because he was an evil bastard who murdered Americans. Soleimani was certainly a bad guy. But does that make killing him, quote, very simple? Again, spot on commentary. I don't care how bad this guy was. Illegal airstrikes are not simple. Then he gives examples of how he feels China and Mexico could just as easily be considered to have bad actors. And he asks if we can start airstriking them. Exactly right again, Tucker. Going around and murdering people you disagree with, who are evil or bad or whatever, is not a policy that works forever. And it's at best morally ambiguous. At best. There are an awful lot of bad people in this world. We can't kill them all. It's not our job. Our government exists to defend and promote the interests of American citizens, period. Instead, they're telling us what an awful person he was. He clearly was. So? That's irrelevant. We fought quite a number of wars around the Middle East in recent decades. We attacked Saddam Hussein twice. In the end, we killed him. We invaded and occupied Afghanistan. We toppled Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. We fought ISIS in Syria and then, for some reason, stuck around. We're still there. We joined humanitarian missions in Lebanon and Somalia. Our special forces have been quietly fighting in Yemen, Pakistan, Niger, who knows where else, many other places. In every single place, each of these conflicts has turned out to be longer and bloodier and more expensive than we were promised in the first place. The benefits? Often they've been non-existent. A lot of lectures about how the people we're killing deserve to die. Certainly they did. Hope that makes you feel better. Wow. Holy wow. This has got to be the most epic video I've seen in a long, long time. Again, I don't agree with everything Tucker is saying, but wow is he nailing some important issues. I mean, the clip really speaks for itself. But hey, America's a democracy. And as I sometimes hear people tell me, that means it does what people want. So let's hear Tucker talk about how the majority of Americans voted to start this conflict. America's democratic. At least we have that. I mean, it's not like the government has gone rogue and is just randomly killing people without the will of the people. What do the American people think about all of this? Not that anyone cares. In a Gallup poll taken last August, just 18% of Americans said that they backed military force to shut down Iran's nuclear program. So in a democracy, you'd think this would matter. But as is so often the case, the preferences of actual Americans don't enter the equation at all. They're immaterial. So... There you have it. One of the best videos I've seen recently. It's completely anti-fascism and anti-war. And it came from somewhere a lot of people might not have expected it. Mr. Tucker Carlson, I salute you for this one. We probably disagree on a lot, but I really struggle to see how anyone can disagree with what you've said here. And I really hope people take the time to understand what I mean when I sometimes mock the idea of democracy. The people's will is important, but America often ignores that while claiming it's democratic. I really don't see it. 18% of Americans support using the military to stop Iran's nuclear program. How many would have supported military action to stop Iran's alleged attempt to kill a few dozen American troops illegally in the region? 1%? I mean, that's still way more than how many people in China want Hong Kong to be independent, I suppose. But 1% is not the people's will. Not even close. This is not a democracy. It's a war machine driven by profits. This is what happens when the corporations take over. But more on that another day. For now, let's pray the people of America get some kind of representation in their government's actions. Because right now there seems to be almost none. Thanks everyone. See you soon.